Calvin Lewis. I'm the program manager for SafeWalk. Um, once again, we would like to thank everyone for um, giving us some of your time today so we can just tell you a little bit about the program. Um, I'm here in the stead of the program director, uh, Christina Lynch. Um, her and I have been a part of this program since it was started in uh, the spring, uh, along with Matt Schaefer. And uh, together, we're just trying to make a program that will be sustainable and continue to provide safety for um, us as students and your students um, for years to come. Um, the agenda, um, we're going to do an overview of the program, a quick operations report, a um, uh, very little bit about budget and, budget and funding, uh, program evaluation, and uh, future directions for SafeWalk. Um, why SafeWalk? Um, there was crime on campus. This was uh, done last, this uh, particular slide was done last year. But there had been three assaults, and two of them had been with weapons. Um, and then there were stories of students who were sleeping in the UL. Um, students would bring a pillow and a blanket because they would say, well, I know I'm going to be in the UL late, and I'm scared to walk home by myself, so I'm just going to curl up on one of the couches, and I'm going to stay in the UL. Um, that's not a safe, um, and that's not a uh, compelling uh, educational environment. Students who feel threatened won't necessarily, or students who feel threatened typically don't do as well as students who feel comfortable and safe. And um, so that was just one of the reasons that we wanted to start Safe Walk. Also, um, there was a survey that was done. I believe 3,000 students were polled on how they felt, and about 76% of the students said they felt unsafe after dark. Um, also, um, Safe Walk fits with a lot of the safety measures that are already in place. Um, it complements the P2P and the library shuttle. Uh, the P2P runs um, until 3 a.m., but there are some students who either don't feel comfortable taking the P2P or don't want to wait the 15 or 30 minutes for the P2P to come around, or for whatever reason, they just want to go home. Um, they've been in the library studying. It's you know 2.30 in the morning. The last thing they want to do is wait for a bus. They want to get to their pillow as fast as they can, and you know they want to get there safely. Um, Safe Walk was, uh, it started under uh, former student body president, J.J. Rayner, and um, the EAs, uh, Jonathan Tugman and Christina Lynch, uh, researched other programs like the one that's at Berkeley and wrote a proposal for Safe Walk. Uh, Jonathan Tugman was our director last year, um, and Christina Lynch was an EA under him as he was a student body secretary. Um, as time went on in June of uh, 2009, uh, they met with Chief McCracken, and um, they got the approval to proceed. Um, in the fall, that's when I came on board, and we started figuring out how we were going to make this program work. And we launched in January of 2010. Um, our first walk was with the chancellor. It was during the day. Um, it wasn't an actual safe walk, but it was, it was, it was symbolic that we were ready to go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a brief operational, operations report. Um, we're located in the, U in the undergraduate library. Um, that is where our dispatch station is, and our dispatcher um, will pretty much stay back in the station and keep track of all the walkers. Um, we typically have seven people on a schedule a night. One is the dispatcher. The other six people are in male-female teams. There's three male-female teams that work on each night. Um, the equipment, we have safe walk vests that were donated um, from one of the, we have a person in student government whose parents um, work in some sort of a, construction, and so they happened to be able to design vests for us, and we were able to get those for free. We use uh, push-to-talk cell phones, and we have helmets and bikes. Um, the bikes, half of them were donated, the other half we had to buy, um, but they help us get from uh, point A to point B quickly. Um, hiring, uh, this semester we had 35 applicants. Compared to last semester, we had 73. Um, the application process was a lot shorter this semester because we had to hire people within two weeks. Um, Last semester when we started the hiring process, the hiring process was started somewhere in October, and it went all the way until uh, November, and then we hired people and trained people in December, and they started in January. This semester, we had to hire people in September, train people in September, and have them ready to go by, um, actually, all of the new employees started this week um, on Sunday. Um, we hired eight males and eight females, um, and we also hired three work-study students um, to kind of see how work-study would help our budget as far as paying employees to do this job. Um, and now we have rolling applications. As we um, expand, we're going to need more people. We're going to need to operate with more um, employees a night. And so the only way we can do that is to eventually hire more people. Um, the training, 
training is done um, with the help of DPS, and um, we also conduct the training the employees who have been here before. And then um, Christina, the director, also goes through a lot of the administrative stuff, um, how to respond to people, things like that. Um, requesting a safe walk. There's several different ways to request a safe walk. Um, you can call 919-962-SAFE, which we publicize a lot. Um, we have pens and flyers, business cards. Um, it, it's out there. And then there's also the website, safewalk.unc.edu. Um, the site is safe because the only way you can request a ticket is if you put in your onion information, which means that we won't get fake walks. We won't be out looking for a student that's not there because every student has to put in their um, onion in order to request a safe walk. Um, how to safe walk. First thing we'll ask our safe walkers to do is verify a student's identity, either checking their one card or having their PID number, which they'll call into the dispatcher. The dispatcher remains at the headquarters all night and they pretty much they just track you know where we're going, who we're walking with, um, and how long it's taken to do each walk. Um, in between calls and in between walks, when they're not with students, the safe walkers will ride their bikes to get from point A to point B quickly. Say if a student submits a ticket and they're in Hinton James and they want to walk to the undergraduate library, they submit a ticket, dispatcher would get it, she would send it out to the safe walkers, they would ride their bikes down to Hinton James and they would walk with the student back up. Um, they also, well, we also utilize a program called Rave Guardian, which is a part of UNC Mobile. It is where you can call and set a timer and um, you have a personal profile that um, has all your information on it. And if this timer goes off and you don't, if the timer goes off without you turning it off, um, DPS will send an officer or two to come and find you. Um, and last year we sent out a follow-up survey to every student that got a safe walk just to see how we were doing. Um, the number one purpose for Safe Walk is to be safe. Um, it wouldn't really, it would be a pointless program to have students out there that was just endangering more students. Um, so we keep, we use several things to keep both our employees and the students we walk with safe. We have Rave Guardian. Um, the dispatchers are required to check in with every team at least 10 to 15 minutes if they have not heard from them. Chances are with as many walks as we're doing, the dispatcher will hear from each team about once every five minutes. Um, then there's also the training, uh, the equipment that we have, planned routes, call boxes, and um, all of the Push to Talk cell phones are linked to each other so they can um, find each other if need be. Um, now Matt's gonna talk about budget and funding. So, you get to find out where your money's going. <laughs> um, so uh, we have an operating budget uh, for the entire uh, year of about $42,000. Uh, that money is going primarily to employee wages and we would not be able to do this without you folks. And we are so incredibly grateful for your contributions to the program. Um, and you know, it, it's broken down into mostly, mostly wages and then equipment maintenance. Uh, and if we're going to expand, we're going to need to buy new equipment, but uh, that's pretty much uh, it is. Uh, we are, we're still looking at ways to cut costs. One of the big ways that we're looking at is to actually start hiring work-study students. That way their wages are covered by the federal government and not by us. Uh, Demand-based staffing. If we, if we notice on a day-to-day -day basis that if uh, on a Sunday or a Thursday people aren't using the service as much, we might field two teams instead of three teams. That cuts back on wages. Then we can actually allocate that team, that, those extra hours, to maybe putting a fourth team on a Wednesday or a Tuesday when we're seeing a lot of high traffic. Um, and we're always looking for new ways to cut costs. And 